Who exactly was the disguised delinquent responsible for commandeering the Chicago local news? Sit back and enjoy this season's final episode of Mystery Files Debrief! Hi, I'm Shane, and that over there is my arch nemesis, Ryan Bergara. Go ahead. I will, thank you. Non-friend? What'd you, what'd you almost say there? I almost said- You almost called me a friend. I did almost say friend, I forgot. I forgot! In each episode of Mystery Files Debrief, we'll revisit these wild cases, answer your questions, and discuss your theories! And I'll tell you what, this week's episode is gonna require maximum <laughs> Headroom to um, to discuss because there's because um, it was about Max Headroom, the c cable hijacking. Oh, I got it. Do you remember that? Yeah. Did you guys watch the episode? <laughs> if you did it, it's weird that you're here. It's really good. It's I really guess you good. could cheat the system and just watch the debriefs, and that way you get all of the pertinent information. Like you get all of the pertinent information yeah, yeah. here. Nothing but. Did you like this episode, Ryan? I loved it, dude. It's nice to talk about things and learn together. Yeah, it is. Of course, as colleagues. Yeah, that's right. I gotta say, covering this, very satisfying. You know, I'm from the great state of Illinois. Really? I never heard that. The prairie state, the land of Lincoln, a soy boy through and through. And I don't know if you know what that means. Yeah, it's, but we are very proud of our soy output in Illinois. I was one year old when this happened. Are you saying it's you? Are you Max Headroom? A little baby doing little it? Little baby you? A Goo Goo Gaga sort of situation? <laughs> we never we never really tilted all the way down past the waistline. There could have been a diaper on Max Headroom. There could have been a, there probably was. There probably was. But hey, but before we get into uh, the theories, how about a, a quick word from our sponsor? Does that sound good to you, Ryan? That sounds great. Okay. Oh, hi there. It's me, Steven. Feeding my coworkers like a good boss should. We're eating Magic Spoon because it's our sponsor for today's video. I've been searching for a new midnight snack for months, and I gotta say, I think I found the winner. Magic Spoon has definitely changed the game. It's got zero grams of sugar and 13 grams of protein per serving, but it still tastes amazing. See, Magic Spoon is keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. It's naturally flavored and super filling, so it's perfect for my late night cravings or uh, any time of the day, like right now. And there are actually only 140 calories per serving. Right now we're eating, uh, we got cocoa, we got fruity, we got frosted, and peanut butter. That's right, if you wanna try Magic Spoon before we eat out all of the inventory that they have today, click the link below to grab a variety pack and try Magic Spoon today. And be sure to use our promo code WATCHER5 at checkout to get $5 off any order, or go to magicspoon.com slash watcher5. And now, back to the video. Let's see what other people thought about the Max Headroom case. Let's. I find it sus that sportscaster Dan Roan immediately had a theory involving a computer that, quote, took off and went wild. <laughs> Similar to Max Headroom's backstory as a rogue AI slash human hybrid in the 1985 movie Max Headroom 20 Minutes Into the Future. There's a lot to unpack in that. Do you think he's responsible? No. Okay, me neither. Have you seen that? I've mo never seen the movie. I, I kind of want to watch it. Is now. that actually a movie? He was one of those things where, like, he just. It's like when a character gets really popular and they just like, put it in everything. Turn on a TV show, you turn on Oprah, Muncher was there. You Muncher was everywhere for a while. I thought you were gonna say something like, you know, Mickey Mouse or something like that. Or Mickey even. Yeah, he's, he's almost Muncher status. Well, not Mickey even, I, I, yeah. and I think probably several leagues above. Well, yeah, he's like you know. Muncher equivalent, but yeah. Got a lot of Muncher. The, I'm surprised they haven't done sort of a Mickey Muncher uh, mashup. It's one of the VHS tapes you could find in our basement in Mystery Files. <laughs> Mickey Munch Lots store. of porno tapes there, <laughs> in case you didn't know. Uh, what do you think about AI, Shane? It sucks. The movie or the 
like the actual AI. Uh, oh, the movie's good. Yeah, but the, like AI in terms of like what it's becoming in the world. You know, it's annoying. I'm tired of seeing these shitty Wes Anderson videos on my feed. Stop it. Have you seen that AI generated clip of Joe Biden saying really funny things? Though? Yeah, that's funny. That's pretty good. I mean, I'll give it that. If AI does only that, I'm good it's, with it. I think they should have shut it down after they did Joe Biden in the Skinner Marine house. <laughs> which is... Pretty soon the demon is going to show up and I will really hate that. He's probably gonna do more skin of ink bullshit. <laughs> the peak of the form. <laughs> After that, I'm good. I don't think Max Headroom's a robot or a computer. Wait, is that what the theory is suggesting? That Max Headroom is like the guy who hacked the signal is an AI himself? That, computers weren't good enough to do that no. back then. Uh, no. Computers had, I had a computer in like the early 90s and I played games on DOS. Floppy disks, what a time. What a time. But yeah, computers in the 80s, they, they, could do, they could do nothing. Next theory. This is comes from Nova. So the previous jamming incidents had a pretty clear purpose or intent, but it doesn't seem that way for the headroom incidents, other than a grudge against WGN at least. Could the choice of using the character Max Headroom's likeness give any further insight into the motives? No in my opinion. My thought is like, you know, the character of Max Headroom did start out as very like anti-establishment. It's just sticking it to the system for sticking's sake. What I actually think, and I really don't think there was a lot because, of time. Well, and I will say it does sort of go with his vibe, which is like, he is a digital, you know. But what I actually think is I don't think there was a lot of thought into the mask itself. I think very much like the movie Halloween by John Carpenter. Mm -hmm. They went to a local Halloween store. Max Headroom was popular at the time. Yeah. And they just picked it up because that's how Michael Myers got his mask. It's a, it's a William Shatner mask that they just spray painted white. The background of the thing does match sort of the Max Headroom TV show aesthetic. Oh, maybe. So they, if, if they did grab it sort of haphazardly. And then you're like, let me, let me work with this. They did expand the aesthetics of the vibe. I looked uh, high and low for Max Headroom masks for this episode. I couldn't find any. It's because most people don't know who he is now. Yeah, it is weird that he's just sort of largely fallen off as a character. Though I thought I read somewhere that he was going to be rebooted soon at some point. <laughs> Plug him back in. Yeah. But I don't know that the public has an appetite for it. So that's all these reboots. Nobody cares anymore. So we got, we Give got. us new stuff. Okay, those are very interesting theories. Let's move on to Qua. Qua! Qua, Qua! 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 As a Whovian, a Doctor Who fan, oh boy. I thought it was funny that the uh, hacker decided to interrupt that show. If you two were to pull this off, which show or program would you hack into? You know, I gotta say, and this is not a direct answer to this question, but I do have to point out, I do think this is one of the creepier cases we've covered this season. Because it's, very, it's unsolved. It is just unsettling. The vibe. It's very unsettling. Yeah. I like somebody- It's Lynchian. Yeah, I like someone figuring out or just deciding one day, I'm gonna do something really fucking weird and creepy. Yeah. And I'm gonna have no explanation for it. But It's well, better to do that than, you know, kill somebody. The thing too though is like, I don't know that the person necessarily set out to make something creepy. They might have thought that this was very funny. That's true. And sort of like a good prank that's just sort of enigmatic. Now let me bring it back to the question here. Yeah. Have you ever thought of maybe doing something horribly nasty and were horrified to discover that you could? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you talking about? Like, what do you mean by, could you do something horribly nasty like, and know, discovered like, that you could? Like steal. Are you talking about like, you've thought about murdering someone and then were shocked to discover that you had? No, one time. What did you do? One time I was like. What did you do? I was like, would it be crazy if I stole this stick of gum? Yeah. And then I did it. I've always wanted. And then I did it. But then I felt bad and I walked back in and I put it back. I've always wanted to shoplift. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You uh, thought about it and I, then you discovered I, you could. I hear people saying all the time that, uh, you know, oh, when I was little, I, I stole something from a store. And I'm like, why didn't I ever do that? That seems fun. I don't think you should, but you could. You could. Back to the question, what show would you interrupt? I'd want maximum eyes on that thing, so I'd probably hit Yellowstone or... Maximum what's eyes? What's, what's popular right now? Well, it would be have to be something that's live because you couldn't like hack succession. A law and order of some kind? That's not live though. What? Right. I'm, oh, you're talking, yeah, because that oh, is... Oh, the State of the Union. Fox News would be funny to hack, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah. I would just do goofy things like juggle. You'd juggle. 
ice cream cones. Yeah. Hard to do. I'd want eyes, and then I'd just, um, it'd be like a close-up of my mouth slurping up a millipede like a spaghetti. What if you and I hacked the NBA Finals, and instead of playing the Finals, we played a one-on-one -on -one basketball game of you and I playing Nerf basketball? Dressed up as Shrek? Dressed up as Shrek. And Donkey? And Donkey. Who's who? I, I think I'd be Shrek. I could be big, do tall donkey. I think that's what I was thinking, tall <laughs> donkey. That's No, that's unsettling. And tall then, donkey's pretty creepy. And then 20 years from now, two people will sit in a room just like this and figure out, and try and figure out who, why did these two guys do this? And yeah. why, why was the shorter guy Shrek? Nobody will ever know it's us. That donkey was so we tall. Could... It's unsettling and creepy. There it is. We didn't even think that was going to be creepy. I bet you that would be very creepy. Shrek donkey ball. Shrek donkey ball. So I noticed that most of the mysteries this season stayed mysteries. Was there a specific reason for this, or was it because the most interesting mysteries are the ones that are still mysteries? That's a good question. The first incarnation of this show, there was a, a, a time when there was a couple more mysteries in there that were actually solved. But then we found out the research that they were kind of thin, so we had to swap them out or they just weren't that interesting, perhaps, and we had to swap them out. So there actually were more solved cases in this season than what ended up happening. That is the answer. I wish it to say it was by design, but it was because we were like, whoops. That's right. And it is true that mysteries are more fun to talk about because the non-mysteries, you're like, hey, you know what happened? This. Yeah, it's not like the show What's is- for lunch? Uh, you you know? want your lunch to be a mystery? No, I'm just saying like- <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, I was about to say. move on. You could talk all day about. This isn't solved files. There's a reason for that. Yeah, this is. Our next question. Shane, growing up in the Chicago suburbs, how familiar were you with this case before this episode? I'd heard of it. I'd heard of it. Because you know. did it as a baby. I was one year old, so it wasn't at the top of my, you know. You're probably a tall baby. Yeah, I'd heard of it. Next question. Ryan Davis. Ryan, what's your. <laughs> Why this question? Ryan, Did you discuss this in the episode? Uh, Ryan, what's your what's your bench PR, bruh? It's a nice question to wrap out the season. Do you bench? I do, but I don't. I don't ever bench. I, I think don't, it shows. I don't think I've ever done a bench personal record because, like, I'm not benching to set records. I'm benching to be in shape. Are you one of those guys who screams when he does it? No, I cry. <laughs> I'm like, just one more. <laughs> that was 165. <laughs> I actually don't do personal record stuff. I think that's really stupid. I know yeah. some, you know what a personal record I is? Mean, goals in general. What's your like, max, what are, what bro? What trying to prove? That's actually what he was trying to say is like, what's your max? What's your max? Max is when you do like one, like literally one rep with yeah. as much weight, as much, as much weight as you possibly can and that's what your max is. I've never done that before. Yeah, me neither. Because I don't think that's useful information. It's not like I'm gonna be on the freeway and someone's like, my baby's under my Prius. And I, they're, I'm gonna be like, how heavy <laughs> is that, how heavy is that car? Is it 400 pounds? Why don't you just- Cause I can lift it once. Wait, is the Prius- Wait, no, I, I can lift it once. <laughs> yeah, you gotta <laughs> sob. Yeah. And they That happens me. though, mothers. Strength. Mothers have Adrenaline. a mother's strength when the baby is under a Prius. I bet you I could fucking flip a car if my baby I could lift a mother. That does it for this week's debrief, and that also does it for this season of Mystery Files. What a journey it's been. It's been a good time discussing mysteries. Yeah. With, with you. With Solved cases, mysterious cases. I guess in the end, I've had a lot of fun here. Well, you looked like that was the most Stephen Lim face I've ever seen. <laughs> I think I'm ready to be friends again. If you're comfortable with that. I'm being very vulnerable right now. Let's shake on it. Are you gonna? I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna pull my hand away. I won't do it. This is what you call trust. This is what you call trust. <laughs> Look at the suspense we've generated for the, the season finale of Mystery Falls Debrief. Am I gonna pull it away? Am I gonna pull the football away at the last second when you try and kick that bad boy? I'm really putting myself out there right now. I'm literally putting myself out there. I won't do it. Let's be friends again. <laughs> I was actually kind of scared. <laughs>
right. Nice, That's dude. That's great. Okay. Hell yeah. Oh my. Oh Christ. All right. Let's I could it. tell there was a glint in your eye where you were considering doing I it. Was, well, I was only going to be a defensive move, but I had to, <laughs> you know, I had to, I had to trust. Maybe just because of this, but I'm getting intel. I've got Annie. I think uh, mine's broken. Annie's telling oh, me. Oh no, it's coming in now. This has been re Mystery Files has officially been renewed for a second season. Holy shit! We gotta get to work. Th uh, thanks for being here all season. D to me or them? <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching the show. Obviously, we, we're doing it again because you guys watched, That's watched right. the show. We wouldn't renew a show that you didn't watch. That would be weird. Uh, stick around, watch our entertainment because we've got some puppet history coming up. We've got some ghost files coming up down the line. That's right. And ghost files may be coming to your town. So uh, we'll That's see right. you there. Thank you. Uh, let life always be a mystery and um, embrace, embrace that maybe. Why not? Hmm? Something to think about. We should have had Stephen Lim hack this episode. What would he do? Just stare. That vacant, dead-eyed stare. Bye-bye, okay. everybody. Bye-bye, bye -bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what did I just say? I don't even know. I'm gonna be honest, I completely zoned out. <laughs>